Shri Krishna. Today I'm going to speak about GM foods, the next evil in your food and one of the most crucial topics in the complete world. Nowadays we have two parties, one is the pro-GM activists and the anti-GM activists. So they're having a huge fight, both of them, on internet, on TV, every single place. But we don't get to know about this because the pro-GM guys want you to eat junk food and GM foods and get into big time trouble. So what is really a GM food? It is a food which is mutated. GM means genetically modified organisms. These foods are extremely dangerous for your health and for the farmers who grow it and, and for the social environment and for the environment too. So today we are going to see how GM affects your health and how is it pushed into the media, how is it pushed into our food system and every single place in our kitchen and every other place. So now, starting off with how GM came inside this world. So first of all, GM is an um, unnatural food. That means it's not even a food. So whatever God has made, he has made certain grains for consumption and also he has, uh, and, and he has created the things that are supposed to be eaten. If we try to mutate this for silly purposes and start mixing other chemicals inside it for the so-called purpose of nutrition, then we are going to get into big trouble. So now, GM is a very, very dangerous thing. Many people may be very angry about this topic that somebody is saying bad about GM, but when you really read what's going to happen by GM, to the next generations and to the modern world right now. So we should see some proofs and statistics and everything about the GM food and why it is extremely bad for your health and for everybody around you too. So let's start with how GM came inside this world. It started off all with money. Like money has been the start of for all the problems in the world. So for money, they wanted extra yield and the yeah, farmers were fooled with extra yield and these guys wanted GM to be all around the world so that they can successfully finish their depopulation agenda. So now, that was the main motive of GM coming inside the world. And then the second thing was, they gave reasons to um, help the people in Philippines because they had VAD diseases, that means vitamin A deficiency. So all of these small reasons contributed to a big pro-GM activist motion inside the complete uh, world and they started making these um, false researches to prove that GM was very great. And now, let's see the first thing that they ever did. Bacillus thyrangius toxin, which was the first toxin ever put inside. And then for these GM foods, the next thing is, there is requirement of too, too many pesticides. And there are 10 more questions that are asked by every single anti-GM activist about why GMs are not safe for your health. They start with, does genetic engineering of crops increase yields? Absolutely no. Um, actually, uh, Europe has almost neglected GM products. Many countries in Europe have said that GM products are uh, bad for your health and France has conducted many researches on this. Germany, Switzerland, France, except Britain, maybe many of them which were related to USSR too, have brought out regulations on this GM crop. So now, let's see why GM crop is so dangerous. For 10 reasons, GM crop is one of the most dangerous uh, food on Mother Earth. So it starts with this, does genetic engineering of crops increase yield? Well, that was the first thing, the first reason given to promote genetic engineering into the world. Now let's see if this is true or false. The United States and Western Europe, there was a research on both these places and both of them had a serious debate. One, the United States said that GM is helpful and the second one is um, our uh, yeah, this Europe and they both had this kind of a research which finally said that Europe had more conventional uh, breeds of plants and therefore they succeeded in this 
and United States was suffering serious losses because of GM foods. So this proves that GM yields are not satisfactory. And in many farms too, including the golden rice crop, the BT crops and everything, the farming ideology was totally spoiled and then um, the, uh, the previous way of farming was spoiled and, and these seeds also couldn't do any help. And then they used to contaminate the other ones also and the breeds used to go long and long or through all the other um, generations and finally these foods were adulterated completely. So now, uh, actually maize, canola and wheat, these are the three crops which had no produce except when they were genetically engineered too much and they had to be pumped with so many herbicides, pesticides, otherwise pests would attack them and nothing would happen to the real pests. Only the good pests would be killed. That will have another topic. Do GM crops in decrease pesticide use? Well, that has also been another reason for the pro-GM activists to make it um, just get inside the world, commercialized. And that's why we are also getting it in India too. Our politicians, they are all supporting this and bringing it forward. So the person who started off GM was Bill Gates. And he was the person, the money-minded, greedy person who started this all off. He is the cause of whatever evil things are happening agriculturally today, including other things, economic collapse, whatever it is. He has a part in everything. And Bill Gates has spoiled our world and he has destroyed it completely with this. And he has bought 5 lakh shares of the Monsanto stock and therefore has increased its production and everything. And Monsanto is a company which is one of the most main companies which has brought out GM foods. So, the next thing is, 80% uh, of all GM crops are claimed to be pest resistant. And the next statistic is that, also, the GM tolerant crops, according to a research, um, in only in the United States, in other countries also, but only in one country, mainly the United States, there was use of 239 million kilograms of pesticide just for the crop, 239 million kilograms in just one year, no, no, sorry, in 1996 to, to 2011. Between this time, two, 239 million kilograms of herbicide was used in the United States. The next is that um, insecticide, insecticide was increased by 56 million kilograms in the US. And then another thing is overall pesticide use increased by an estimated 183 million kilograms or about 7% increase in the pesticide usage of the US. And GM BT crops are not even an efficient way of decreasing insecticide use in farming. They are really dangerous and they can be really bad to your health too because they consume a lot of pesticides and the genetic engineering will stay in your gut according to your research. Human research, it was a human research and the genetic DNA, GMO, the genetically modified DNA still stays in your gut and you get serious problems because of this yeah. or your cells may be mutated too. Research on humans. Uh, and then another um, research by France in 2007 showed that um, herbicide use was reduced by 94 to 95% by using conventional breeds and also herbicide yeah, by 2009 herbicide use was down to 82% and insecticide use was down to 12% of 1995 levels. Similar trends have occurred in Germany and Switzerland so this showed that these benefits were achieved without the use of GM crops. Now this shows that do GM crops decrease pesticide use? Now with all this proof we would say no. GM crops do not decrease pesticide use. And the next thing is that Bt. So Bt toxin, it's a toxin which is claimed by the pro activists that it will destroy the pests which try to eat it. Well, that's, that's a funny thing. There are two kinds of Bt. Again, everything is one thing called unnatural and natural. So this unnatural BT toxin which is engineered into all the crops, mainly cotton, brinjal and other things, 
This is the one which has actually brought mutations, asthma, cancer in India and serious problems in all over the world. And in Argentina, just due to the cultivation of GM, many children have got genetic problems in them. Now, uh, now we will see that beaky crops. Beaky crops have been found to harm butterflies and beneficial pest predator insects that are helpful to farmers, such as ladybirds, according to researchers, and lacewings too. These particular insects are very good for the crops, but they are destroyed by this beaky toxin. But on the other side, if these progeny activists want to prove that that's not true and beaky toxin is helpful to reduce pest control, yeah, to reduce pests and increase pest control, then it's the other way around. It's the other, it's the natural Bt toxin which is able to do that, not the natural one which is engineered into the Bt crops. So, um, let's see it scientifically. Unlike the Bt toxin which is activated only in the gut of the insect, this is the Bt toxin which is engineered in GM crops which gets activated switched on constantly. That is what kills lacewings, ladybirds and the helpful insects like so many other helpful insects. So GM BD crops have been found to be toxic to mammals in laboratory and farm animal feeding experiments. So this shows that both the things, the two main reasons of GM being promoted have been falsified now. One is does genetic engineering of crops yield higher, uh, um, no, no, one second, increase yields or the second one is also falsified. Do GM crops decrease pesticide use? No. Both of them are not correct. Now we move on to the third question. Are GM crops a permanent and effective solution to farmers weed problems? Now let's see the most horrible statistics here that have been surveyed. So according to industry survey in the US, 61.2 million acres only in the year 2012 were infested with glyphosate resistant GM crops. So there are a special chemical called glyphosates which kill these uh, weeds and sometimes they enter your food also and destroy your food. So these, yeah that's a topic for another day but glyphosates are extremely dangerous for the body. But still, these farmers, they, they don't know what to do other than that. They, they could have put neem cakes or even that, but they are just mind controlled by the media which tells them to put glyphosate. That's another thing, but after putting a lot of glyphosate for these GM crops, which have to keep taking glyphosate after glyphosate, and that will only keep them safe. And that's why they were engineered to be herbicide resistant and glyphosate resistant also. So, glyphosate resistant weeds, super weeds as we call them, mutated weeds, that means they just, after getting too much exposure to glyphosate, they somehow adjust to the glyphosate atmosphere and they become super weeds. So now, how much ever glyphosate they put, it doesn't happen. The next statistic is, in Georgia, only in one place, and that too only in 2007, 10,000 acres of farmland were abandoned after being overrun by glyphosate resistant pigweed. That's another weed. And one report said the resistant pigweed in the southern United States was so tough that it broke farm machinery. Now if it's that tough because of this glyphosate which was applied too much, that too only for the GM crops, then we have to just imagine why these weeds are growing there and then why they are getting encouraged by the GM. And then the next thing is, 25% increase of weeds in 2011, 51% increase in weeds of 2012. Nowadays also we see so many barren lands full of weeds. If you see their history, you find it was owned by a farmer who started using pesticides and GM for his farm. And nowadays in Indian government, right now, I, even I found it very astonishing and a torture to Indian market and Indian farming that the pesticide uh, um, cost was decreased rapidly. I think it was 50 rupees before and now it's 30 per litre. Nah, I, I have no statistics about that. But one thing I know is that it has been reduced. 
Now when it's reduced, the farmers will start using pesticides more and then destroy the farms. Now the fourth reason. Trillions of GMO meals have been eaten in the US. So GM crops don't have toxic or allergenic effects, right? Ho oh, oh, ho, GM does not have any toxic allergic effects. Wow. Let's see some proof on this. Effects which may arise from the GM crop itself or from residues of the pesticides affected on them include liver and kidney toxicity, enlarged liver, disturbed liver pancreas function, and accelerated liver aging and reproductive problems, disturbed in the function, one second, disturbances in the function of the digestive system and cellular changes in the liver and the pancreas, less efficient feed utilization and digestive disturbance, altered gut bacteria, intestinal abnormalities, excessive growth in the lining of the gut, similar to precancerous conditions. So this causes cancer too. Altered blood biochemistry and also multiple organ damage, potential effects on sterility and also immune disturbances, immune responses and allergic reactions, enzyme function disturbances in kidney and heart that shows it, it causes dangerous problems too and stomach lesions and unexplained deaths sometimes people get unexplained deaths and then it just gets hush hush by the government because they don't want to get the truth out that GMs are the cause of it all and, uh, and then higher density of uterine lining severe yeah, uh, yeah okay then then severe stomach inflammation and heavier uterus differences in organ weights which is a common sign of toxicity or disease. Now, then it also causes severe damage of liver, kidney and all the other main organs too. Now, because of this, we can finally say that GM crops are bad for health. They are completely bad for health. It's being proved by an animal test, one human test and um, also these meals, GM meals. That's why they are so obese. Um, US citizens which are they are so fat and obese it's not their mistake it's because of the government which is pushing GMOs 63% of the world's GMO is in the United States and India and other countries are following United States after it's um, it comes after RG, um, Argentina and all of the other states but US is the highest producer and consumer of the these crops and now, cancer, allergies, or kidney and liver damage. This is also one of the things. Can GM and non-GM crops coexist? Coexist means, can they both exist differentially but together? Without mixing with each other or making one crop or the other um, infest each other. So that is the basic thing of coexistence. So before, in previous times, we had two crops which would coexist with each other without harming one or the other. If you plant a cabbage and a carrot, not too close, but kind of close so that the seeds can fall um, here and there, then nothing would happen. No mutation would happen. But nowadays, because it is GM crops, some farmers would still have organic crops with them, maybe without knowing or knowing, and also GM crops with them. So all of these crops would not grow together. The GM crops will gain power over these crops and mutate them towards the GM crops and so those crops will also get mutated and then the next generations of those crops will be completely GM crops because of the seed uh, moving and all of that. So for these reasons according to our test for these reasons coexistence of GM with non-GM and organic crops inevitably results in GM contamination of the non-GM and organic crops. So this is what it says and then this is what happens and no farmer can finally have organic crops while trying to grow GM crops too. So can GM and non-GM crops coexist? No. That's another reason why GM should be abandoned. And then another thing is some more statistics which give total information about how the world has been contaminated with these GM products. Mainly the US is the main cause of this which contaminated the world um, products. 
So in 2012, an unauthorized GM BT pesticide in rice, BT63, was found in baby formula and rice noodles on sale in China. And Europe has still um, product recalls and all has happened. And in New Zealand, Germany, and Sweden, contaminated rice products were also found in Germany, Sweden, and New Zealand, where it led to product recalls. So the next thing is, to, in 2006, an approved experimental GM rice grown for only one year in experimental plots was found to have contaminated the U.S. rice supply and seed stocks. How can just one plot of rice contaminate um, U.S. rice supply, the complete U.S. rice supply? How is that possible? Well, it's simple. The GM seeds will interact with these seeds and mutate them too. And in 2007, U.S. rice exports decreased 20% from the previous year as a result of GM contamination. In 2011, the company that just developed the GM rice, Bayer, which is the company which developed the GM rice and, com and contaminated India, so many other countries, and finally agreed to pay $750 million to settle lawsuits brought out by 11,000 U.S. farmers. Then, in 2009, an, an unauthorized GM flax called CDC Trifid contaminated Canadian flaxseed supplies res yeah, and resulted in the collapse of Can um, Canada's flax export market to Europe. Now, actually we are seeing only these foreign countries but it's really affecting the world grain um, economy too. And then, um, organic maize production in Spain has dropped as the acreage of GM maize production has increased due to contamination by cross-pollination with GM maize. Now this surely shows by a result and it's by a test and this shows that it's totally wrong. In Canada, contamination from GM oilseed rape has made it virtually impossible to cultivate organic non-GM oilseed. In 2000, GM Starlink maize produced by um, Bayer Crop Science was found to have contaminated the U.S. maize, uh, um, maize supply. And this led to a $1 billion loss to the U.S. Now this shows that GM crops cannot coexist with these organic crops. And when they do, for instance, like this, a farmer grows both, then they mutate and it becomes dangerous. And it floods the complete supply which results to product recalls and economic draining of the country. Then the next thing is, are GM crops needed for good nutrition? There was an instance when um, in 1993-1998 in, in 2003, at uh, this time there was a serious, from the beginning only, there was, a, there was a kind of a problem in Philippine people, according to these GM proactivists, in which they had VAD, Vitamin A Deficiency Disorder, which caused dangerous problems to them like death, blindness, night blindness, and also other problems. So, the GM activists released the GM Golden Rice. But, after many years, with daily headlines coming about GM golden rice, this rice didn't appear in the market. Why? The GM people said it was all because of the anti-GM activists. But the real truth is that why didn't the GM golden rice appear in the market was because that it was proven wrong by all tests and it was not going well with any farmer. It was not growing well and nor did the yield increase and whatever the activist said, the proactivist said, GM proactivist said, nothing was happening true. And then this, okay, the data now given here, the data for VAD in children under 5 in 1993, 1998 and 2003 were 35%, 38% and 14.1% when the GM golden rice was introduced. But the data on VAD levels in 2008, when Philippines resorted to organic ways of maintaining this disease and destroying it. While the figures for um, 
Okay, it became 9.5 and 6.4%. It reduced dramatically. So now this shows that in this experiment, it surely shows that GM golden rice could not do anything. And then the first series of GM golden rice. Uh, yeah. So what is basically golden rice? Golden rice is a special GM thing which has been genetically engineered with beta carotene. No, no, sorry, beta carotene, a very uh, good ingredient if it's natural, but this unnatural one was injected in the rice and that made the color of the rice little golden. And then this became uh, like people started using this in high things. No, it didn't even come to the market. As I said, because of uh, the farmers were not liking it and also it was not growing well and nor was it um, helping the other crops. It was destroying the other crops and because of many reasons the GM golden crop was not at all accepted by Philippines and it was not even effective too. So then otherwise everywhere there is also non-GM better carotene enriched or, uh, orange maize. There is orange maize already and that one is non-GM. There is a natural variety of orange maize that contains high levels of beta carotene. Why genetically engineer rice, that too rice, to be like that? In India also, they are just allegedly giving this to people. Even without information about this, saying it's golden rice, the GM golden rice. And many people, like, they bring that kind of a golden rice. That is when this golden rice was brought out. They are giving it without any information to people who are accepting it. And in India also, uh, in this ration card, when they have the ration card and they go give it to poor people especially, they get this rice from them. The farmers, when they grow nice rice for the Indians, the government gives them back poison like GM golden rice. So, are GM crops needed to feed the world the seventh reason? This was the main reason given by Bill Gates. We can feed the world. The population is becoming 8 billion. We can't do anything about it. We have to give more food to the world. Well, this is another crazy kind of an idea given by Bill Gates. He keeps saying stupid statements all over the media, everywhere. And that's why he was given the Indian um, Award. Civilian. Indian Civilian Award, thank you. Indian Civilian Award too and so many other awards just for this one green technology. Finally, the green technology brought, green revolution as they call it, it brought out GM. And now, GM crops needed to feed the world, uh, uh, just feed the world. Now, we already have this one crazy statistic that the world is having 8 billion of population. That will be a topic for another day, but still, the According to me, the population of the world may not be that big. It's not that po it's not that possible. The the um, the numbers of people are doubled by the people who write the data. And then now, um, the other thing is, I just forgot to give one more point. GM golden rice uh, is extremely expensive for farmers to buy. Many people had lost their lives due to so much money standing in the banks and uh, the seed banks and trying to get that uh, uh, GM golden rice and bring it and then grow it at their home and that's too much for them. And then feeding the world. How is that? Now let's see a statistic. A major UN World Bank sponsored report on the future of agriculture compiled by 400 scientists and endorsed by 58 countries did not endorse GM crops as a solution to the challenges of poverty, hunger and climate change, noting variable yields, GM proponents have long claimed that genetically engineering will deliver healthier and more nutritious biofortified crops. No, no, just a second, biofortified crops. So now we got it that a UN World Bank sponsored uh, report done by 400 scientists and sponsored by 58 countries is denying the GM. So now let's see how this is claimed. So the next thing is GM is going nowhere. Even if they are not able to give it in daily food, 
that's one reason why it's not able to feed the world and the second thing is it's being put into different places and it's contaminating other crops that's why the farmers do not want to use this and when they don't use it GM is not use, uh, uh, reaching the people so it's not able to feed the world now the eighth reason why GMO is very dangerous for you the eighth question that everybody will have about GMO foods is which is better at producing crops with useful traits conventional breeding or GM let's see conventional plant breeding continues to outperform GM in producing crops with useful traits such as tolerance to extreme weather conditions and poor soils improve nutrient utilization, complex trait disease resistance and enhanced nutritional value biofortification. So in some cases marker assisted selection is used to speed up conventional breeding by guiding the process of natural conventional breeding quickly bring, bringing together in one plant genes linked to desired important traits. So, which is better at producing GM crops and conventional breeds? GM crops are horrible as we saw in so many things. But in production and in sustainability, which one would be better is the main question. And the serious um, force behind the pro-GM activists. So, now let's see. GM technology offers the opposite, a narrowing of crop diversity and inflexible technology that requires years and millions of dollars of investment for each new trait. Just for one trait, they have to do a lot of genetic engineering. But conventional breeding and MAS uses the main many existing varieties of crops to create a diverse, flexible and a very good crop. And the next thing that I would like to say about these crops are high yield, pest resistant and disease resistant crops. What are they? High yield multi disease resistant beans for farmers in Africa. High yield disease resistant cassava for Africa. Australian high yield maize varieties targeted at non-GM Asian markets. Maize that resists the parasitic weed pest Striga and tolerates drought and low soil nitrogen for African farmers. Maize that resists the grain border pest. Green super rice bread for high yield and disease resistance. And high yield soya beans that resist all of these kinds of nematode pests. And aphid resistant soya beans. And high yield tomato with sweeter fruit and high yield pest resistant chickpeas so many different kinds of things including the uh, ring, um, uh, yeah, very nice ring spot virus resistant um, natural papaya which competes with that GM virus resistant papaya so this proves again that they are high yield pest resistant and disease resistant crops which are natural created by the Lord and are completely there from the past which are not genetically engineered and which can be easily flexible they can be grown at easy environments and also environments which do not have those many nutrients too so next is gm crop technology precise enough to ensure that it will not result in unpleasant surprises for this one question we should read this book alter genes twisted truth this is the book which is very wonderful it has a lot of effort and a lot of information in it and the author name is Stephen M. Drucker he made this book and hats off to him for making such a great book and um, it's one of the greatest books because it's been having so much information about uh, all of these um, uh, foods which have um, GM and why was actually GM made so um, according to the ZFN technology there was a ZFN technology which means zinc finger nucleus technology which created dangerous problems in humans and also clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats CRISPR 
nine was found to cause unintended mutations in many regions of genome of human cells. So this says that the most best technologies, most intricate technologies of GM foods have caused dangerous problems and they do cause unpleasant surprises. And it and it mutates DNA proteins and biochemical composition of the resulting GM crop. So why are crops being genetically engineered? First thing is traditional plant, plant variety protection, PVP, because it's basically on patents. Why is this complete GM created? We are all confused about it. Why is it really done? It's because of these patents. They want to patent all of these things. The second reason is depopulation. Why patent? They want to keep mixing and saying, I will create, I made this. Nobody can make even the next chain. If the plant itself has a progeny, a new progeny of it, they will have a patent on it and no farmer will be able to grow it. So, first thing is patent basis, PVP. Second thing is depopulation agenda to kill us all massively. It's present in every single product, whatever it is, aspartame. Every single junk food in the world is contaminated by GM foods. That's why it is um, genetically engineered. Now we have 10 reasons. We have part of the 10 reasons. Finally, I am. Uh, I hope that you are convinced that GM foods are really dangerous for you. It would be better if you also read the book Food Forensics by Mike Adams who has um, made a book which is also very nice and which explains completely the heavy metal. Why is the heavy metal bad for you? And has also given many databases. How is heavy metal related to GMOs? Because when pesticides are sprayed on your foods, then pesticides also contain aluminium, high levels of aluminium, mercury and lead and other things. So they may con get contaminated with your food too. So that's why GMs are bad for your health. They are completely bad for your health and it has to be just uh, killed, this GM trade and all of that. Let me just tell you a few foods which have high levels of GM in them and some foods which have alternatives too. Aspartame, very dangerous chemical. It is made out of three chemicals, aspartate, methanol and phenylene. That we'll have a topic for another day, but corn, cornstarch, tomatoes, American corn especially. Don't just boycott it. Wherever you see American corn, ask everybody. You have to know about your food securities what's happening to you so be very careful of that and then tomatoes there are two kinds of tomatoes one is the sweet tasting tomatoes uh, we say indigenous desi or nati tomatoes in south india we call it nati in north india we call it desi and it's also called indigenous in english if you find these anywhere you it's it's the best thing if you use that they are generally sweet these tomatoes and the GM tomato, what's wrong with it? It contains fish genes to improve it to be stabilized and in a motion just like a fish. And potatoes too. Potatoes also have the same kind of thing. They have mosquito genes in them. And so that they can tolerate too much of pesticide and herbicide. Sausage. Most sausage contains corn syrup or corn syrup solids. So sausage is also bad. Ice creams. It contains RGBH hormone and also HFCS, high, high fructose corn syrup also and non-organic and synthetic vitamins. Be very careful of this. This can be um, non-vegetarian proteins and things also in it. So then is in infant formula and also beef, milk, all of these things. But beef is a very bad thing and it's very bad because cows must never be slaughtered. And the, the fact that they add this to beef is actually good that let them keep adding it. Let the people who eat beef stop it. That's a topic for another day. Let's discuss why beef is so dangerous. Then milk. Even milk is contaminated with GM because it has bovine growth hormones. And alfalfa, vegetable oil and also canola oil and, and margarine and shortening and Hawaiian papaya squash, flax, all of these things 
flax seeds, everything. They contain GMOs. So now we have finally come to a conclusion. Stop using GM foods. Wherever you know about them, wherever you find them, and wherever you get to know about GM foods, just boycott them. And then one most very disturbing cause that happens due to GM foods is hormonal imbalance. Especially the hormones which determine the gender. So, the imbalance between estrogen and testosterone, which is the main hormones, which determine gender. So, this one, this great hormonal imbalance and um, this present in chocolates also, soy is a thing, in, even in biscuits and everything. So, when you consume, when anybody consumes this, there is a hormonal imbalance in that particular person. And then, that's how the transgenderism is there. Half of the causes of transgenderism like drugs and all of that, but one main cause is junk food. What you eat determines what you are. What you eat is what you are. It's a very famous saying and I feel that's very true too. Especially in this thing, we have to fight for our food rights because we have the food rights and we have to do something about it. Otherwise, this world will be in a huge danger. And because of the economic collapse and the World War III coming next, people will die in numbers. So we have to be prepared for this. We have to stop anything unpleasant happening in the world. And the only way is to control the food supply and make it back into the organic way we used to use before. So I hope you get convinced about the GM foods and don't believe the media. The media is another thing which makes you mind control. Throw the TV out of your house and just don't heed any other person or any other website which says GM is good for your health because it's all a lie. Or it's a biased um, test or whatever they do is biased. GM cannot be proved as good for health, nor can be proved as good for farmers, nor good for anybody. So finally, we end with the conclusion that GM food is bad for you. Jai Shri Krishna.